Hello and welcome to the British Dapper and today we're talking about dress shirts for men. So it's very easy to say a shirt is a shirt, isn't it? Well, in this short video we're going to discuss dress shirts and the levels of formality ranging from very formal to the informal look and also how the shirt influences things and uh, the colour of the shirt and the design of the shirt itself. So when it comes to shirts if you only had one shirt you were going to buy I'd always go for a white shirt. A good fit in the cuff length, nice and reasonably tight in the body not too tight so it's over restrictive and enough room in the neck to get one or two fingers in and that's a good fit but how do you get that good fit if you don't have the experience behind you um, so that's what we want to discuss first of all so when it comes to a shirt um, there are several ways you could buy one. You could buy one off the shelf, um, off the rack as they say, or you could uh, buy it second hand, or you could buy it online, or another way would be to actually have the shirt made specifically for you. So with those things there are different things to look out for. Obviously if the shirt is designed specifically for you, the latter version, then the measurements are taken specific to your body rather than generalised measurements as would be the other forms of uh, shirts you might buy. So for example if you're buying off the rack then most shirts are described by their collar size and then by their fit. So for example they could be in this case a 15 and a half inch collar, a classic cut um, or a regular fit or you might see a slim fit, skinny fit, yeah, muscular fit. They're all different widths on the chest and the waist area. The collar size is still going to be 15 and a half or 16 but the thing to remember is, whilst there's a craze a couple of years ago to wear shirts that were slim and skinny fits, um, along with the clothing at the time, now we go for a more tailored look. Um, I would suggest that if you're wearing a skinny shirt, then you should be a skinny person because they're specifically designed for that body type. If you're a bigger chested person, broader across the shoulders, the chances are um, when you wear a skinny fit or a slim fit shirt, it's going to be very tight around this area here, the chest and around the waist area. Unless you increase the size in the collar and that then starts to look baggy and uh, you don't get such a good fit and it doesn't certainly look that good either. So just be mindful of those things. When you see some shirts advertised they're not always going to be the same length in the actual sleeve length as well. So sometimes you get an extra long sleeve length, uh, a short sleeve length. Um, so just be mindful of that and uh, you need to really take some measurements before you go into buying that type of shirt and if you go onto the manufacturers websites they will describe how they do their measurements but most of them will take it from here down to the tip of the shoulder down to the elbow and then from the elbow to the wrist okay and that is that overall uh, measurement is where you'll see the sleeve length advertised. So when it comes to actually shirts the formality I think is 
potentially going to be down to the colour. Uh, so white being the most formal and you see that in people that wear morning suits they wear uh, for example white tie black tie uh, business suits white tie, uh, white shirts are going to be the most popular shirt you'll see but after the, and so that's the more formal as well um, and they come in different color designs I'll talk about that slightly uh, that slight variant later on but when it comes to then injecting color for example it could be a blue shirt or a white uh, off-white shirt it could be a pink shirt so for in, in this case we have here a pink shirt okay um, this is a lot less formal but a pink shirt, a solid blocked coloured shirt, is much more formal than, for example, something that is striped or patterned. So when it comes to the actual shirt itself, let's talk about the actual uh, construction. So first of all, you've got the collar itself. Um, and the front of the shirt now uh, white shirts can have this what they call covered so you don't actually see the buttons coming through this is the more formal of shirts and also you might have uh, detailing on the front for example a dress shirt uh, for uh, evening wear uh, in this case we've got a uh, pink shirt got a cutaway collar and I'll explain that in more length and in this case we've got a French cuff or a double cuff this shirt here as you can see is uh, a striped shirt quite bold colors therefore not so formal the actual collar is uh, a regular collar with a small gap at the top and the shirt again buttons are exposed but the detail in the cuff is different here we have a barrel cuff single cuff and as you can see the actual ends of the shirt are rounded off Okay, some are more square, some are uh, uh, cut at an angle as well, just to give it a little bit more of a design feature. So you'll notice some don't have a pocket, and some will have a pocket. For example, here we have a pocket on the shirt. This is basically down to the design and the function of the shirt. So everyday shirts you'll get uh, for everyday wear tend to have a pocket. The more formal dress shirts tend not to have a pocket. And this is because uh, if you're everyday wear, you might ha need a pocket to put a pen in or something like that. Whereas a dress shirt is more for design for a specific look rather than function. And therefore there's no requirement for a pocket. But don't let that distract you from buying the shirt. Okay. So in this case, it's a, Hawks and Curtis, you'll notice the actual collar is what we call a cutaway collar. Yeah, and quite tight at the top of the knot, but very wide at the bottom. This shirt is really designed to accommodate a different type of tie knot. So a thicker tie knot at the 
to take up this gap at the top whereas this shirt when it's is a little bit closer just a fraction so a different type of knot maybe this one would be a half Windsor so if some shirts are cut back a long way back now those shirts are actually designed for a bow tie part of the bow tie that goes around the neck and then the bow tie the bow itself covers the front of the actual shirt collar similarly you can have a wing tipped shirt again more designed for a bow tie and for normally evening wear uh, in this day and age so some collars are, can be longer and more tighter in the actual area here which means that that would afford a smaller knot a smaller longer knot for example it would be a four in hand or something along those lines maybe a Prince Albert which has become much more of a fashionable knot so when it comes to shirts it's not straightforward and the design itself uh, so whilst we have stripes these are less formal than solid colors um, I would argue that although this has got a blue stripe in it because it's predominantly a white shirt this would be more formal than something like this. This is a much more informal and more uh, casual shirt to wear. Now when it comes to designer shirts, you'll see different features. So in here, you can see the actual front part of the shirt has been the material has been used to cut on a bias, uh, it gives it a different look, it has a sleeve button so you could roll the sleeves up and you'll see on the cuff on this one it's been cut off on the corner uh, to give it a different look you have this detailing in the actual cuff itself it also has a sleeve button as well just to bring it in tighter under the arm and this one is obviously a barreled cuff but you have two different button settings there for sorry doing your uh, shirt up around the actual wrist interestingly some shirts will have one sleeve larger than the other or wider than the other and it can be sort of half an inch difference between one side of the shirt to the other now when you have a shirt designed for you or made for you they will automatically ask what side do you wear your watch so if you wear a watch because of the extra room needed to still get an aesthetically good look when the actual cuff is done up they will ask what side you wear your watch so they adjust the cuff width to accommodate a watch that's the level of detail that they go into if we want to look at a sliding scale of for example shirts I would go white it would be your primary most formal shirt from white then maybe into pastel colors solid block in other words a uh, pale blue a uh, pale pink um, even an off-white and then you start going into striped shirts and uh, checked shirts and 
obviously the bolder the stripes are, the more multicoloured the stripes are, the less formal it becomes. And the same with the checks as well. The more smaller the shirt check is and the more pastel colours they are, the more formal they are. Uh, the bigger they are and the more bolder they are, then the less formal again. And it also comes down to materials as well. So popoline is uh, what a lot of shirts are made of, popoline. Then we start getting Oxford, which is a different weave. Herringbone weave is another one and so on. And then we get flannelette shirts as well, flannel shirts. Uh, which is like a brushed cotton and they are more and more informal because they tend to be worn with uh, for example um, tweeds, uh, country wear, that sort of thing and then we get all the way down to sort of fashion shirts which is a bit like this one here. Very bold statements and they actually don't require a tie they are more of a focal point and rather than the white shirt and other shirts are the canvas or they are the foundation garment for everything else to hang off whereas with this type of shirt it is really bold and it is the statement piece um, and that dictates everything else around it uh, so uh, obviously with shirts you can have short sleeve shirts I would always plump for if you're gonna buy shirts buy long sleeve shirts you can always roll the sleeves up short sleeve shirts especially in white they really don't cut it you're talking about a formal shirt but a very informal uh, sleeve ending so it's not really gonna work so if you're gonna have white shirts use them full length collar uh, full length to the cuff um, informal yes okay but I would stay away from wearing a white shirt I would use something which has got more color in it or texture or pattern in it and that would be a much better look for a casual wear especially in the summer months okay so quite a lot of information there and it's just shot from the hip uh, but I hope you understand there are different collars so for example this one here is a regular sort of collar but you would know that the knot takes up about one third of the collar length if it starts coming down you're really using the wrong knot for the shirt I'll put a uh, jot the uh, details down for a video on how to wear a tie uh, where it discusses different collar lengths and the different sorts of knots to use um, because it's all part of the overall image so we hope you enjoyed the video if you did give us a thumbs up if you'd like to subscribe then please feel free to do so we love constructive comments, so if you'd like to make one, jot it down below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Um, any comments you make might be captured and used in future videos. So, until next time, take care.